is Messi! It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world, in front of any player in the world, and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's ZFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station. It's a Friday, everybody. Some would say it's time to party. Well, if you are, make sure that you're doing it safely here on ZFM Sport. The team is here to get you prepared for a fantastic weekend of sport. They are Mike, Chris, Alois, Sean, our producer, and I'm Barry. On the home front today on the show, the Zimbabwe Rugby Union have submitted a draft plan on how they intend to resume the game together with proposed venues to the Sports and Recreation Commission following their clearance to start the game by authorities two weeks ago. In international sports news, Wallaby skipper Michael Hooper says he's excited by what his young team can achieve, but warned the error count has to drop in their must-win Bledisloe Cup clash against the all-conquering All Blacks tomorrow. And around the world in 60, we take off in England where Derek Chisora made a passionate appeal for a fair referee as he wants to be allowed to enforce his aggressive tactics on Alexander Osaik in their fight tomorrow. In Italy, Mercedes are poised to take another prestigious record away from Ferrari as they seek to wrap up a seventh consecutive Constructors' Championship on Formula One's return to Imola on Sunday. And in the United Arab Emirates, Ravindra Jadeja smashed the final two balls of the match for six as Chennai Super Kings severely dented Kokata Knight Riders IPL playoff hopes with a thrilling six wicket win in Dubai. Don't miss out on our play of the day party Friday, fire Friday, as we light it up to get your weekend off to a banging start. And then we jump into the beautiful game, kicking off in the Premier League, where Manchester United will be looking to build on their 5 0 win over RB Leipzig when they face rivals Arsenal on Sunday in the standout fixture of match day seven in the Premier League. In Spain, Atletico Madrid will be seeking to make it three victories in a row when they travel to Pamplona to take on an inform Osas. Sula. In Serie A, only goal difference separates second place Napoli when they go up against third place uh, Sao Suolo in the pick of the fixtures. And then there's also the small matter of the first Soweto derby of the season when Orlando Pirates clash with Kaiser Chiefs in the first leg of the MTN8 semi-finals at Orlando Stadium. So time to go, everybody. It's Fire Friday. Here's your power play. It's called Ginger. It's by Wizkid. It's featuring Burner Boy. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors, and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. Gone are the days when the at sign was only for use when you're referring to an email address. When we say at ZFM Sport, you know what we mean. We mean we're available on social media and we can keep the conversation going outside of the show. Indeed, in our personal capacities, we can do the same. At Mike Madoda, at Chris Meadzi, at Gazaman14, at Sean Tafirenika, and I'm on at Barry Manandi. Let's go on the home front. Zimbabwe Rugby Union have submitted a draft plan on how they intend to resume the game. Together with proposed venues to the Sports and Recreation Commission, the ZRU were cleared to start the game by authorities two weeks ago. However, they were asked to prepare a dossier on how they could go about the game without compromising the health of everyone involved in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's hear from the ZRU Communications Manager Simba Zanga, uh, who is optimistic rugby will return to action soon. The Zimbabwe Rugby Union has been hard at work um, preparing for the eventual return to the training grounds and obviously to competitions for rugby. At the present moment, we have been asked, just like every other sport, we have been asked to submit uh, a reapplication indicating our state of preparedness for all these things, technical, administrative, periodical checks, 
and so on and so on. However, as Zimbabwe Rugby Union, we have already gone ahead given that we had the first go ahead from uh, the SRC and the Ministry of Sport, we have gone ahead and set up a medical committee whose recommendations we were awaiting and I can confirm their recommendations have been well received and we are in the process through the medical committee we are in the process of acquiring or of purchasing the required medical supplies um, the masks, the sanitizers the washing baskets the washing buckets sorry, um, the liquid soap everything that is required to sanitize the areas, to disinfect the areas, to sanitize the places all that is being bought as we speak Z. Orena Rugby was given the green light two weeks ago, Mike, and now they seem to be getting towards getting back onto the green grass. Uh, the first step, of course, submitting uh, that uh, those recommendations from their medical committee. Well, I'm surprised they got the green light uh, without having recommended those in the first place because uh, those uh, should have been uh, the basis of the decision that was made to actually give them the green light to return to action. So uh, a bit of a surprise because uh, uh, we are seeing something of a double standard uh, as far as the different sport codes are concerned in Zimbabwe where football was asked to submit uh, the medical plans, as it were, before they were given the green light, before they were sanctioned to return to training. Uh, rugby... Uh, uh, got the privileged hand, as it were. I'm surprised it's taken them this long, Barry, to get back to the authorities on those plans and the format in which rugby will take as it returns uh, towards the end of the year. Yeah, and uh, in that, uh, as rugby returns, Chris, you've got to think to yourself that that green light that was given ahead of this dossier that they've now uh, seemingly submitted to the SRC uh, will be determined largely as a result of how quickly SRC can then turn it around. Mike quite rightly points out it took them a long time to submit it. Hopefully SRC can turn around quickly because we're running out of daylight in 2020, aren't we? Definitely. And we're, we're running out of time and it's especially bad if you take a look at the players. Rugby players in this country have not had any um, sort of competitive action since the start of the year. And if we're saying that we're going to be competing in competitions like the Gold Cup um, going forward, then we need some sort of return to action in terms of our rugby. If they turn it around quickly enough, I think that's going to be brilliant. But I think these the, there needs to be a bit more urgency in terms of our, our um, different sporting codes in terms of submitting these documents. Because in as much as you're trying to get this organization happening at the highest level, which is the SRC, the clubs and everyone else involved need to get their act. They need to get things in order as well. So I just think I wish there was more urgency that we could be seeing from these different sporting codes. Uh, the only good side, Barry, if you can call it that, uh, is the fact that uh, very few of our African brothers uh, have actually returned to competitive rugby action. Uh, South Africa, who uh, carry out uh, their sport in a very professional uh, and well-organized uh, environment, only recently returned. I think they are f only four weeks into the sort of like uh, domestic competition, uh, and they've had to pull out of the rugby championship, uh, which would have seen them go up against the All Blacks, the Wallabies, as well as the Pumas of Argentina. So that is so the the only green. Uh, can I say the only? It's a bit of a reprieve because we are not mm. under so much pressure and all the other nations that we will compete against in the Gold Cup, your Kenyas, your Ugandas, your Namibias, ETC, are also facing the same challenges. Mm, so we are in the same boat. Uh, Alois, you could almost say what's good for the goose, in this case Zimbabwe, is good for Uganda. Um, but the, 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 <laughs> the issue being that, the, the issue being that, um, uh, Alois, and, and I want to talk about the amount of time it's going to take to get our uh, rugby players to up to speed. Um, it's a little bit more than just a preseason as, as pertains to football because football, while being a contact sport, it's not a collision sport. Collision sport, it takes a lot longer for you to get back into the rhythm of things. So we're going to see a bit of time before our rugby players are up at the level that they used to be. Yeah, of course, Barry. You see, that's the situation that we face here. Like you said, that even soccer, 
you need a time for preseason. You need time to prepare. You need to get the players in shape. And the rugby uh, rugby situation is even worse, like you said, because they need to be strong. They need to bump into each other. They need to build those muscles. They need to be used to falling down, diving off the ground, and all that. You know, you, it takes away if you stay long without doing all those things. You know, in Shona, we say, you know, so you need to rebuild that confidence. You need to build that mental strength. So, so it takes time. So we won't be seeing rugby action coming back in time soon. There is so much time that is needed for preparation. Strength and conditioning coaches have got their work cut out. Let's talk a little bit about those double standards, Mikey, and dive into that. You mentioned them and alluded to them earlier. Uh, let's look at the statement that uh, came out of uh, uh, the ZRU where they said that we were given the green light to start playing the game, but under strict health gu guidelines. We were asked to furnish the authorities with a clear framework on how we intend to go about with the game. We have since drawn up our plan paper, which we have submitted to the Sports and Recreation Commission for scrutiny. While we're waiting, uh, for a response from the Sports Commission, we have continued engaging our stakeholders, getting their input on the best ways we can improve the game going forward. All of these uh, um, issues and uh, uh, hoops, as it were, uh, football was made to jump through before they even got the green light. Perhaps if rugby had had the same sort of measure, we would have probably seen rugby on the green grass uh, at this stage because they would have been able to, to polish all these papers sooner, wouldn't they? Yeah, what, what, what's increasingly uh, evident, Barry, about Zimbabwe sport is that uh, we actually don't have a plan uh, for return to action, uh, whether it's uh, football or rugby. Uh, it seems uh, guys are really just, uh, should I say, fumbling in the dark uh, and developing these plans as they go along. Uh, the only sport that seems to actually have a game plan and uh, as shown by the fact that they are now in full swing and they are now touring Pakistan uh, is Zimbabwe cricket. Zimbabwe cricket looked like they actually had a game plan that involved not just the chevrons but also involved the lady chevrons, uh, involved club cricket, involved the franchise system and the national team. So they had a sound plan and they knew how to go about it week on week, day on day as it were. Uh, with rugby and football, they're having to draw up these plans uh, as the situation unfolds on the ground. So whilst rugby got the green light two, three weeks ago, they still haven't moved. They're still waiting for the medical protocols that they are proposing to be given the green light by the SRC. So again, I ask the question, shouldn't that have been done before they actually got the thumbs up? They should have been submitting a plan, submitting the medical protocols, the health and safety protocols, and then the SRC going through that with government, with the Ministry of Health, and with all the necessary parties and then say, you know what, we love your plan, we'll give you a yay, or we think this is a load of bollocks, it's a nay. <laughs> oh, I wonder if there is another B in that plan. That B not being bollocks, it's being a bubble. I doubt that there's a bubble in this rugby plan. But uh, Chris, uh, Mike making it, the sorry. argument there saying that <laughs> and they ca nobody can. Let's be honest, Mike. Nobody can afford a bubble in this country, especially in our professional sport. Uh, so in truth, it needs to be scrapped. But that's a story for another day. Mike making the argument for cricket. They've got the plan. Someone would argue and say that, ah, but cricket is, is less of a contact sport, etc., etc. But you've got to then say, you still must have a plan. And in truth, kudos to Zimbabwe cricket, they did. They definitely had a plan. They executed it well. They started getting things going before other sporting codes woke up to the fact that, for example, with uh, how we found with our football association is that, oh, we have a competition. We need we need to get things going. We have uh, uh, teams that are competing on the continent. We need to sort out a plan for them. It's always it's almost been reactionary. But Zimbabwe cricket was proactive about their return. Um, kudos to them for doing that. But we would expect that the Zimbabwe Rugby Union, uh, Zim, uh, our football association as well, would have the same sort of plan and the same sort of need to want to get back to action. We're not seeing the urgency. Well, the good thing is that it looks like the SRC has whipped out the bottle of oil and is beginning to lubricate the wheels of sport and get them turning once again. And hopefully, round about maybe January, February next year, we will see a return to full action of all sporting codes in the nation of Zim. Hi, my name's Ryan Kenz, Sunshine Tour professional golfer, and you're listening to ZFM Sport.
Let's give you a local sports news roundup starting with golf where after several months without taking part in a competitive event, Zimbabwe's Ben Follett Smith returned to the course in the Sunshine Tours in the State Royal Swazi Open yesterday. He was the only local player taking part in the tournament. Designed by golfing legend Gary Player, this 18-hole par 72 walking course is one of the top ranked golf courses on the continent and it proved quite a challenge to Follett Smith who finished on minus four points and missed the cut. The former Wingate-based player had an indifferent second round which saw him dropping more than 10 strokes in the last six holes. In hockey news, the coaches of the Zimbabwe under-21 men's and women's teams are eager to return to the field and accelerate preparations for Junior World Cup qualifiers which will take place next year in Ghana. The Hockey Association of Zimbabwe have applied for approval from the government through the Sports and Recreation Commission to resume the activities. So far, players have been training individually since they are not yet allowed to conduct group training sessions and we wrap it up with table tennis news which i don't quite know if it's a sport or a hobby or <laughs> just a mere pastime the americans call it ping pong that should leave you thinking. Well, the Bulawayo Table Tennis Association says it has been difficult to organize amateur tournaments as a result of a freeze in schools sport. Two months ago, the BTTA organized a virtual level two coaching course that was meant to equip up and coming coaches with the requisite skills to train budding players. Immediately after the course, the association had planned to have an amateur tournament, but the plans were derailed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Table tennis is among sports that have been given the go ahead to resume activities under strict health and safety measures in accordance with the country's COVID-19 lockdown protocols. Hi, this is Mike Madod and you can catch me and the team for all the latest breaking news out of the world of sport, local as well as international on your favorite station, my station, your station, ZFM. We are Z Team on ZFM Sport. Z from the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. Don't forget, we'll be building up to a couple of big games in the beautiful game. Manchester United, cock hoop on a good run of form. They entertain Arsenal, where the doubts are beginning to creep in again. Get in touch with us on Twitter, at ZFM Sport. And then El Casico, the big one in South Africa. MTN8, uh, semi-final action. Orlando Pirates entertaining Kaiser Chiefs at Orlando Stadium. That is the big game on the continent. But before we get there, let's give you some international sports news, starting with rugby, where Wallaby skipper Michael Hooper says he's excited by what his young team can achieve, but warned the error count has to drop in their must-win bloody slow cup clash against the Old Blacks tomorrow. Australia head into the third of the four-test series, which is also the first game of the Tri-Nations with Argentina after drawing the opening match in Wellington and losing 27 to 7 in Auckland. Let's hear from Michael Hooper. Yeah, um, great opportunity for us. Um, Alan, James, James Slipper especially spoke really well during the week um, about the opportunity that this has and you know he's let a lot slip as, uh, as we all have so um, you know this is a great game for us to be back at home um, you know with an opportunity. He spoke very well, he's, he's been great in this environment um, you know just around we got to play our best rugby. Um, play the rugby that we've been developing over the last couple of weeks and you know we've seen three out of four really good halves of it um, got to bring two tomorrow Z. well Barry it was a very uh, decent start uh, by the Wallabies to the international season that very exciting draw with the All Blacks in the first game and then they were somewhat outclassed in the second game they go into the third missing two key players, Matt Tomua, as well as James O'Connor, who played very well in those two matches, will not be available. Australia, with all the work to do. Yeah, all the work to do, and I think that I would agree with their assertion that they need to cut out the errors uh, in their game. But at the same time, um, in cutting out the errors, such as missed tackles that have been uh, 
that have been identified, you that that's that's a plan that that cancels out the opposition. You then need plan of your own, and I think that Australia needs that plan. Um, even in uh, uh, the 16 all draw, we haven't yet seen uh, the Australian plan, as it were, in terms of it unfolding in its in its uh, to its fullest extent. Uh, so it'll be ho- hopefully in this game we will see that uh, come to evidence. But certainly in terms of a counter proposition. They need to cut out those those errors and and also make their tackles. But Chris, that plan that Barry is talking about seemed to be to go head on versus the All Blacks, take them at their own game. Let's play running, exciting rugby. Let's be attacking. Let's be very offensive. Let's be daring. It worked out in the first game, but they were found out in the second. Do they persist with that plan, or do they go with a more disciplined approach, a more structured approach? They definitely need um, a more structured, a more disciplined approach uh, getting into this third test. Because if you take a look at that second test, they tried to beat the All Blacks at the All Blacks game, and that certainly doesn't work for them. It certainly wouldn't work for them, especially in this game, because you've got uh, a couple of rookies that will be coming on for O'Connor and Tomoa, and they've gone from having a hundred and something tests between them in terms of experience to having less than six in those two positions. So I think that a structured, disciplined approach when you're bringing in a total of four rookies into uh, a test like this, you definitely need a more disciplined approach. Well, one of the areas they're going to have to compete, Barry, is the back line. And you take a look at uh, some of the navy, uh, some of the names there. Uh, you know, the ones that quickly sort of like uh, jump off the page are Marika Koroibete, uh, Dan Haylet Petty, as well as Filippo Daugunu. Uh, but when it comes to Jordan Pattaya uh, and Simone, as well as uh, Noah uh, Lolesio, those guys are very much inexperienced. If you compare them uh, to the names that the All Blacks are are going to be throwing up Borden Barrett at fullback, Jordy Barrett at right wing, Anton Leonard Brown and Jack Gidew in midfield, Caleb Clark at number 11, Richie Mwanga at number 10. So all the experience, Barry, and all sort of like the, the X factor, as it were, is with the All Blacks. That is where the game could be won. Those guys defensively and offensively for the Wallabies are going to have to bring it. They're going to have to bring it. They're going to be tested. They're going to have uh, uh, possibly the sternest test that they've that they've faced. Because uh, take note. Yes, we're saying that the Wallabies uh, have lots of room for improvement. Have lots of room to go uh, to a next gear, as it were. Don't forget that the All Blacks too have other gears to engage. They haven't necessarily uh, uh, hit their top gear. Haven't necessarily become uh, the well-oiled machine that they're well capable of becoming. So when you look at those names that you just made mentioned on the all black side improving the wallaby side improving uh listen it's 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 almost as if it's a one-way traffic but i mean that would be presumptuous of us to assume but yes certainly to be uh measured in our approach uh let's say that they've got their work cut out and i think the one thing that's going to betray the all blacks approach in this game is the substitute that they have named cody taylor alex hodgman tyrell romax in the front row scott barrett Dalton Papali, TJ Perinara, Ngani Laumape, Enrico Ioane. Very attacking, isn't it, Chris? It shows that the All Blacks want to make a statement in Australia and they believe that they can make the statement by playing a hard running attacking rugby. Definitely an all-out attacking side. And if you take a look at uh, this, the run on 15, first of all, yes, definitely an attacking side from the All Blacks. But also what we always know to expect from the All Blacks is that second wave of players that comes off the bench. And that's something that Australia will definitely be wary of. Also, if you take a look at some of the players um, that have been named there, Hoskins or Tutu, really great player. And it's another opportunity for him to show exactly what he can bring to the All Blacks. Right, so this is a big, big game and it should be an exciting one this weekend as the Wallabies try and defeat the All Blacks on home soil. There's also Six Nations action, your fixtures are Wales versus Scotland, Italy will host England and then there's the big, big one in Paris, France versus Ireland. Now, this one, a quick comment from you, Barry. Uh, France versus Ireland, very exciting game that we got in the offing. Uh, a sort of like winner takes all situation. The Irish know that because they're leading the way right now in Six Nations, they score a victory in that game, then the title is theirs to lose. But if things go wrong, England have got the relatively easy fixture versus Italy to pick up the pieces. 
Yeah, definitely, Mike. It's, uh, it makes it for a very tasty affair, uh, that France-Irish uh, Ireland game, uh, because the Irish will want to do the business. They will want to uh, uh, seal the win. England themselves, because they're playing bottom of the table, uh, Italy, chances are that's a banker for them. So they have one eye on that game uh, and hope that France do them a favor. So who do you see winning it? I reckon the Irish. Uh, that, that's also a hope, a desire, <laughs> as well as punditry. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, rugby in South Africa as well. Super Rugby unlocked your fixtures. The Lions will take on the Greekers. Pumas versus Sharks and the Bulls will take on the Stormers. Hi, I'm JC Creel, Springbok and Blue Bulls backline player. You are listening to ZFM Sports. Only DSTV brings you the very best football action. Catch all the action from the most popular league in the world, the English Premier League, with some of the world's biggest stars in Sadio Mane, Harry Kane, Sergio Aguero and Virgil van Dijk. Catch all the action on the brand new Supersport Premier League channel on channel 223. We have the world's best football only on DSTV. Around the world in 60 seconds. International sports news. Around the world in 60 is proudly brought to you by DSTV. We take off in England where Derek Chisora made a passionate appeal for fair referee as he wants to be allowed to enforce his aggressive tactics on Alexander Usyk. The British heavyweight battles Usyk tomorrow and Chisora was quick to raise concerns at the final press conference that he could be prevented from sharing a brutal battle with the Ukrainian. We head over to Italy where Mercedes are poised to take another prestigious record away from Ferrari as they seek to wrap up a seventh consecutive Constructors' Championship on Formula One's return to Imola on Sunday. Dominating the 2020 season with 10 wins from 12 races, Mercedes will set a new Formula One mark of seven teams crowned in a row at the Emilia-Romagna Grand Prix if Red Bull do not outscore them by a significant points margin. We'll touch down in the United Arab Emirates where Ravindra Jadeja smashed the final two balls of the match for six as Chennai Super Kings severely dented Kolkata Knight Riders IPL playoff hopes with a thrilling six-wicket win in Dubai. Already eliminated, Chennai required seven from two balls to reach their target of 173 after Kolkata seamer Kamlesh Nagakoti had shipped just three runs from his first four deliveries, but Jadeja proceeded to smoke Nagakoti over deep mid-wicket and wide long on. Hi, I'm Clemens Matau, Chicken in Midfielder. You're listening to ZFM Sports. The big leagues, the big teams, the big players. The beautiful game on ZFM Sport. All the rivalry. Here is Harry Kane for Tottenham. Oh, what a goal! A classic goal goal from Harry Kane. Catch him if you can. All the stars. Talk about impudence, talk about improvisation, talk about Sadio Mane. And all the game-changing moments. And Raheem Sterling rattles at home, and once more City are in front in a choice. All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. We start our beautiful game preview of this weekend in England, uh, the Premier League to be specific. Now, Manchester United will be looking to build on their 5 0 win over RB Leipzig when they face rivals Arsenal on Sunday in one of the standout fixtures of match day seven. Since returning from the international break, United have won three of their four matches. Football pundits, Stuart Robson, says the Red Devils head into their encounter against Arsenal as the informed team. I think Manchester United, they, they come into the game in form. I think I like the diamond mid, he's had in midfield in the last couple of games. Uh, I think uh, they'll look at uh, Arsenal's back three and look at Xhaka, who's been playing on the left-hand side of a back three. He played in the middle tonight, but there's a player that you can run behind. If Rashford plays at his very best and keeps running off the back of him, he's going to be a real threat. So I would just go with Manchester United. And Arsenal in the top third against Leicester weren't quite dynamic enough. So Manchester United by the odd goal. Z. Alois, Ole at the wheel. We doubted, but he's making us believers, isn't he? Yeah, Ole is at the wheel, you know, to be honest. <laughs> so for the first time this season, I, have, I, have, I haven't been confident with Manchester United as I am right now. After watching the, Lip, the Lipstick match, 
I thought it was not just the scoreline to flatter. It was actually the manner in which it was done, the way they played, and the substitutions, you know, when the team started gelling, when he brought in uh, Rashford, when he brought in uh, Fernandez, you could actually see that there is a team that is playing football. And tactical, I thought Manchester United played so well. The crisp passing, you know, the short and long passes, everything, all the ingredients of good football were there. So for me, I actually think I agree with the pundit that, you know, they are getting into this game as the informed team, as the um, team that has got the advantage. And I believe that they are capable of doing it. They are playing good football. We've always said that Manchester United have got good players, but they're not showing it. But now they are showing some signs that they can actually be a very good team that can actually grow big. Lots of humble pie that we need to serve on the show. So we're going to give you, Chris, a nice uh, healthy portion uh, in, in the sense that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, look, in truth, it's still early doors. Um, a lot of uh, football, a lot of water can pass under this bridge. But in truth, the period which was meant to challenge him, uh, your Chelsea's, your PSG, your RB Leipzig's of this world, he's navigated successfully. He's navigated Almost. successfully and I'm not completely convinced yet. I'm going to say that. But I think I'm a lot more <laughs> confident um, in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and what he's able to do with that squad. Because what we saw, especially in that uh, match against Leipzig, was that the way he used those players, the different players that came on, um, the selection that he had made initially, which I doubted, but actually proved to be quite effective. So I think he's coming into it. But um, let's let's give him his kudos when, we, when we're a bit further along. Yes, he managed to navigate those games successfully. Now we know that his approach, his decision making when it comes to games is getting better and better. But I'm not totally convinced yet. Uh, Chris, they're trying to entrench her position, uh, but they're playing a very good Arsenal side, uh, Mikey. But an Arsenal side that's a bit Jekyll and Hyde at the moment. You're not too sure what you get out of Mikel Arteta's side. And you might want to say to yourself that it's largely more the playing staff that's at his disposal more so than his tactics, would you say? I think it's a bit of both, Barry, because uh, the one thing the, that Mikel Arteta has to try and solve uh, is how he can get uh, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang into the game. Uh, he's been a very peripheral figure uh, in the opening few matches of this season. He's not involved in, in attacking play at, to the extent that the Arsenal fans would love to see him involved. Uh, and uh, consequently, he's not even in the running right now or in the discussion when it comes to the league's top scorers. And yet here is a guy who was competing for the golden boot over the last three seasons that he has played football uh, in England. So that insistence by Ateta to play Lacazette through the middle uh, and leave Aubameyang out out wide and not having the game plan to actually get him in areas where he can affect and affect the game in an attacking sense and in a goal scoring sense is the problem for Arteta. Yes, the personnel may not be as great as the personnel at uh, Manchester United when you look at the teams uh, man for man, but Arsenal still has a very good side. They still have the likes of uh, Thomas Pate, the likes of Aubameyang, Lacazette, uh, Ceballos. Those are very good players. Da David Luiz, when he brings his, his A game, is a top, top defender. So uh, it's a game that should be a lot closer under normal circumstances. The only problem is that Arsenal, short of confidence, and uh, Aubameyang not in the game, Manchester United are high on confidence and Rashford getting back to his best. Uh, he certainly is. Now, I want to stay with you and ask you to set up that Arsenal front three. He's gone with Aubameyang, like I said, through the middle and usually a choice of Saka or Pepe uh, on the other side. How would you set it up? I would drop Lacazette. Uh, I think Lacazette is not a, a reliable goal scorer. He's not the man that you'd put through the heart. He's not the man that you'd uh, have as the tip of your arrow. I would put Aubameyang right through the middle. And then I would go uh, with, of course, uh, some uh, two really quick uh, nippy players out wide in a three-man attack. But I would have Aubameyang playing in the middle where he can affect the game, where moments of brilliance uh, are able to swing matches. Not out wide, Barry, where he's got, uh, at the best of times now, uh, at least two, two players sitting on top of him. And he doesn't have the space uh, to actually go out and uh, then initiate the attacking play. So for me, I would have Aubameyang Back in the middle, Lacazette for me is not the guy you want leading the line. He just is not a, a reliable source of goals. Alois with uh, Maguire and another in the middle and then uh, Luke Shaw on one side and one Bissaka on the other. Does that front three scare you? 
Uh, no, no. I, I, I would rather be, I would be, I'll be scared of a front three that uh, Mike is talking about. When Obama Yang is playing right through the middle, you know, he can give you that moment of brilliance that can uh, result in a goal straight away. You know, when you have got Lagazet, we've got a chance because he can get chances he, he will miss and he is not as quick as, uh, as, 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 the, as the other strikers. He can easily be marked. So for me, if they are coming with Lagazet in front with the Obama and White, I think it's not uh, it's not as, as scary strike post for me. As long as Obama Yang is not playing down the center, a center central channel, he, we are not afraid. I think we've got a better team, even with Maguire and everybody else. The defense looks solid for that front three. Now, Barry, when Obama Yang is isolated on the wing, uh, the problem is even if he puts on the afterburners, if you have an alert center back, they'll always be cover He'll for always the full back. Yes. Even if he beats the fullback, there will always be someone who's able to cover. And so it makes it doubly difficult for Aubameyang to influence matches from out wide. It would be a lot easier if it's through the middle because he's, he's bearing down on goal. He beats the yeah, fullback. He's, 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 go he's heading towards goal. Uh, Chris, we can't sing the song of Manchester United without having a chorus on Paul Pogba uh, because he's a central figure at United. He was pulled out of the, the, the last few games and then uh, in the Champions League, he was given a start and looked as, as every match a decent player, a good player, like we all fully expected him to be. And so was uh, uh, van der Beek and it seemed to work out. It seemed to work out, but I think the problem with Paul Pogba is uh, he could be having a really great game or a really bad game. He's too patchy in terms of his performances. He's too inconsistent. And I think it's it, it, it has a bearing on the team. When Paul Pogba is having a not necessarily great day, United does not necessarily have a great day. So I think in terms of Ole trusting him, that's trust that needs to be built because of the fact that he's so inconsistent in terms of his performance. So going into a game like this where you would expect that a Paul Pogba is going to show up, you never really no, if you will. It might have been that he was given the Champions League start in order for him to uh, be on the bench on Sunday. Let's get the predictions of the in-studio team, in-studio inverted commas, because uh, it is the team on ZFM Sport. Michael, how does this one play out? I'm going with the 2-1 win for Manchester United. 2-1 win for Manchester United and they carry on rolling. What did they say? And the Reds go marching on, on, on. Oh, Lewis. I'm, I'm giving them one, one better. I'm giving Manchester United a 3-1 scoreline win. Yo, 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 yo. You know, Alois is a very That's dangerous pundit right when now. he's confident. <laughs> he's a dangerous <laughs> pundit when he's confident. I'll tell you what. Chris, go. Um, I'm going to be cautious and give Manchester United a 2-1 win. 2-1 win, matching Mike's result. And I'm going with you guys as well. I think it'll be 2-1 to Manchester United. The rest of your weekend fixtures out of the Premier League. Wolves will entertain Crystal Palace. Sheffield United versus Manchester City. It's Burnley who take on Chelsea. Liverpool will entertain West Ham at Anfield. And they have got a centre-half crisis because Joao Matip may not be ready. You've got Fabinho who limped off in that Champions League game against Michigan. Uh, so chances are they will have Joe Gomez and another at the heart of that defense. Let's see how that goes. Aston Villa will entertain Southampton, Newcastle versus Everton, Tottenham Hotspur versus Brighton, and Manchester United will take on Arsenal in the big one. Now, fantasy football, everybody. It's an important part of our lives and a very important part of fantasy football is the captain's pick. I'm not going to ask Alois, it's Harry Kane. Let's let's move on from that. Uh, uh, Michael, you're still bad. <laughs> No, 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 no. I actually got a very good uh, pick last time out. I went with Swan from Spurs and uh, he delivered He delivered big time. So maybe the reminder for guys is that uh, you need to make sure that you, you, you get your teams ready because uh, there's action tonight. Uh, remember the first game uh, is Wolves versus Crystal Palace kickoff 10 p.m. So you've got about maybe a couple of hours uh, between now and then. Uh, to make sure that uh, you sort out your teams as well as get your, your captain's picks in order. And this week, I would recommend, personally, okay, I, would, I wouldn't say recommend, okay? I'm going to tell you who I am picking, okay? I fancy Mohamed Salah versus West Ham. Uh, I think uh, he's he's good for a goal. He's always due and he always scores his goals in clumps. You know, he's one of those yeah. guys who's got a knack of having an assist and a, and a brace. He, he's, he does things in groups, uh, Mohamed Salah. Does things in groups. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to pick uh, Salah as my captain as well. Chris, are you going to go with that or pick a different one? 
I'm going to go with Son. Um, I think he's been incredibly reliable. Um, if you need points, he's the kind of guy you want. Um, and also just that combination with Harry Kane seems to be working. So Son for me. Son as captain is taking on Brighton. Uh, I think you'll be in good company. Any one of those three. Salah, uh, Harry Kane or Son. The league that makes football oh so beautiful. Where artistry and strokes of genius are the order of any day. Where the game is played with a smile and the little master creates his magic. It's Lionel Messi! All the news from the Spanish La Liga on ZFM Sport. The goal! All right, let's wrap up the rest of European action. Starting in Spain, where Atletico Madrid will be seeking to make it three victories in a row when they travel to Pamplona to take on an inform Osasuna. Diego Simeone's side are currently fifth in the table with 11 points from five matches and they'll be looking to close the gap on Real Sociedad who are leading the way and Real Madrid, their city rivals who are in a second. Talking about Real Madrid, they play Huesca in Madrid at the Alfredo de Stefano. Barcelona are away to Alaves. The rest of your fixtures will see Athletic Club of Bilbao take on Sevilla in the pick of the fixtures. Aiba versus Cadiz. Real Betis versus Elche, Celta Vigo versus Real Sociedad, the surprise long leaders, Granada versus Levante, Valencia will entertain Getafe at La Mestalla, whilst Osasuna will take on Atletico Madrid in that game that Diego Simeone needs to win to keep track or keep pace with the leading sides. Heading into Serie A now, only goal difference separates second place Napoli when they go up against third place Sassuolo in the pick of the fixtures. Gennaro Gattuso will likely have to do without captain Lorenzo Isigne on Sunday, who limped off early yesterday with a hamstring injury. The rest of the Serie A fixtures, Crotone versus Atalanta, Inter Milan will be up against Parma, Bologna versus Cagliari, Udinese versus AC Milan, Spezia versus Juventus. Torino versus Lazio, Roma up against Fiorentina and Sampdoria versus Genoa. Let's head over to Germany where Borussia Mönchengladbach hosts long leaders RB Leipzig in what arguably looks the fixture of the round in this weekend's Bundesliga action. Mönchengladbach unlucky not to have beaten Real Madrid in the Champions League in midweek and of course a Leipzig they're going great guns in the Bundesliga your action from Germany Schalke or Fear who are stuttering and struggling they take on Stuttgart Cologne versus Bayern Munich who are free scoring and looking like they're getting back to their best Arminia Bielefeld versus Borussia Dortmund Dortmund will be looking for three points on the road Eintracht Frankfurt versus Werder Bremen Augsburg versus Mainz, Freiburg versus Bayer Leverkusen, Hertha will take on Wolfsburg, and of course, like we said, the pick of the fixtures is a Leipzig who travel to Mönchengladbach. The beating drum. The roaring fans. Take a ride on the wild side with the Africa Report on ZFM Sport. All right, let's take a short hop, skip and a jump south of the Limpopo into Mzansi, South Africa and into the MTN8 semi-finals. Wafa, Wafa, your semi-final lineup looks like the Super Sport United, of course, which is steered by uh, their gaffer, Caetano Tembo, will take on Bloemfontein uh, Celtic. And then it is El Casico. Yes, they call it Cassi Flavor. El Casico. Orlando Pirates take on Kaiser uh, Chiefs. Michael, this one is going to be a good one and it's a two-legged affair. So there's a chance of getting back into it. And uh, Orlando Pirates hosting the first uh, uh, leg of this two-legged affair. How does this one play out? It's difficult to call again, Barry. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs, uh, they've had uh, something of a stuttering start uh, to the season. They lost convincingly to Sundowns and then they scraped their way to a 1-0 win, I think, over cheaper. Uh, on Tuesday, whilst Orlando Pirates have uh, had uh, two draws uh, to get their league campaign underway. Orlando Pirates, though, resting a lot of their sort of like key players uh, in midweek when they took on Stellenbosch. I think the likes of Gabadino Mango uh, didn't get a run out in this game, but obviously he had one eye uh, on Kaiser Chiefs and uh, looks like Orlando Pirates, I think, wanted to make a fist of it this season. And so uh, this is an interesting one because we don't know which 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 of the, the teams uh, is going to turn up 
Uh, Kaiser Chiefs yeah. have not looked very convincing uh, under Kevin Hunt. Uh, and Orlando Pirates have got a clutch of new players. A lot of new fla- uh, faces at Orlando Pirates still getting together, still trying to gel, still trying to find a rhythm. Uh, and they'll be hoping that uh, this is the game it all comes together in El Casico. Indeed, and uh, it's at Orlando Stadium, Alo, as you said quite poignantly, uh, that in an empty stadium, all that matters is the pitch dimension. So we're not going to talk too much about home advantage, but what we, what we are going to say is that Mike points out that there are lots of new players at Orlando Pirates. The one thing that we've seen in the games that they played, in transition, this team can hurt you because they've got a lot of pace in their team. Yeah, but you know, when you look at the situation, no fans on the field, on the field, when you look at Orlando Stadium, this are this is this is the place where the both uh, both the both teams are coming from. It could have been a bumper a bumper crowd at the stadium, but unfortunately uh, no crowd. But like you said, uh, Orlando Pirates, they look like they've got the players. They've got the players that can actually do the business, they are quick and you can actually tell that they are in for this uh, this season. They are looking to actually do a uh, operation uh, Bamba song, they want everything. When we, are, they, we see them resting players for the league and saying they are going gang for the for the for the MTN, it means that they want to they want they, they want the cups as well. They they've got an eye for it, so it's going to be interesting. Here's the Chiefs they haven't started well. They have a good team, good coach as well, new coach. We don't know what is in stock, so this is a game that we can actually wait and see how it how it goes out. Which team brings their A game and which team brings out the B team? So we have to see after the match. Um, the one thing that we did see in terms of Kaiser Chiefs, Chris, is that uh, goals win matches is the old adage. And in truth, that uh, front two, that combination of Castro and Billiard, seems to be rediscovering its uh, chemistry almost. And uh, if it clicks, who knows? Yeah, that combination of players, when it clicks for Kaiser Chiefs, I think it's very effective for them. Um, uh, Kama Biliat is effectively on set piece duty at the moment and if he's able to deliver those brilliant crosses um, into the box and Castro is there to finish then I think it works excellent every single time um, they're doing a good job together if they bring their A game then I think Kaiser Chiefs can definitely manage to get something in this particular match they're incredibly patchy at the moment and they haven't had a good start so we'll see what happens yeah, Mike gave us the fine print at the start of this analysis and said that who knows which teams show up. It's early doors, uh, so we're not too sure. But we must predict, Michael. I fancy Pirates to win this one uh, on the back of the fact that I believe they've got a better central defense. Uh, Tulani Slachwayo, the uh, Bafana Bafana captain, uh, Happy Jele has also come back and they looked, looked really good together uh, versus Stellenbosch. And uh, Chris talked about those set pieces, those crosses, Happy Jele and uh, Tulani Slachwayo will eat them up for breakfast all the time. So uh, I fancy on the back <laughs> of that, uh, they should be able to nick a goal on the other end and win it. So. I'll give it to Pirates. 2-0. 2-0? Oh, my goodness. Alois Mujia, tell us. You have no vested interest in terms of emotions, so you can give us good punditry. Yeah. <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, anyhow, whatever, whatever way this match goes. But I'm looking at Orlando <laughs> Pirates. They are knitting a very good side, and I think they will, they will need this one. 2-1 uh, to Orlando Pirates for me. Chris? Um... I'm going to speak from the heart here. I think Kaiser Chiefs um, are slowly coming together. Um, I think they're going to have hiccups as usual, as with any team that's still coming together, new coach. But I'm going to give them a 2-1 win. There you have it, the score lines according to our pundits. And if any one of them gets it right, they will be starting a church. The tides and offerings are very welcome. <laughs> I will say that this game is going to end 1-0 to the Amakosi and then the second leg will end nil all with the Amakosi going all the way to the final possibly to face Kaitano Tembo and Super Sport United in the MTN 8 Wafa Wafa final well, that's what I say uh, what do you say and hopefully this weekend all your teams perform successfully we've got to go we're out of time we'll catch you on Monday may God richly bless you that's my story and I'm sticking to it Monday out and it's Messi It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. The biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world.
The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behavior. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station.